Hey everybody, Carl Schuf here from Snorkel.tv with a very important message for you all today. Um, it's come to my attention that there are some faulty random number functions floating around out there, and I have in fact been using them. Uh, my good buddy Matt Lean explained to me last night that he had found an error. All right, and so whenever we're programming in Flash, you are very often going to want to be generating random experiences based on random numbers. And here I just have a little doohickey that is generating a random number between 0 and 600, and I'm displaying that number to you, and also moving this little character to an X that represents that value as well. And as I'm clicking, the numbers that appear are obviously random, but the problem is that the numbers at the high and low ends um, have a 50% less chance of showing up than the numbers in the middle. So in English, what that means is if I'm choosing a number between 0 and 600, using the function that I'm using, 0 and 600 are rarely ever going to show up. So I don't expect you to believe me, um, nor do I expect you to read a whole bunch of stuff explaining mathematical computations. So what I'm going to do is literally demonstrate the proof and the pudding. All right, so I'm gonna go over to this little random goodness file here. And one second, let me go back. Let me just show you the code that I have here. Um, I have a random number function, and it's using this equation here to generate a random number between a minimum and a maximum value. So I can just say, hey, give me a random number between one and four, zero and 600, or 10 and 20. And it will give me a random number back. Now the thing is, this function is floating around online in tutorials all over the place. You can Google it and you will find it. Um, and plenty of people use the right function. I just want to make sure my users uh, know about this and moving forward, uh, we do what's best. Okay, so let's go over to this file here. And what I have set up um, is just a little example where what I'm doing is I'm calling this random number function 10 times, okay? and 10 times I'm asking for a number between 0 and 3. You don't have to understand this code at all right now. All right, and when I test this out, what I'm doing is showing you how many times the number 0 showed up, 0 times. How many times the number 1 shows up, the number 2, and the number 3. So I'm only running this test 10 times. And if you look at it, you'll see that there's a fairly even distribution of occurrences of each number. Okay, so again, I'm picking a random number between 0 and 3, and I'm showing you how many times each one of those numbers shows up. So all of these numbers on the right should equal 10. 3 plus 1 is 4, plus 4 is 8, plus 2 is 10. All right, and as I do it, you know what? There we go. Perfectly even distribution there. Here, you know, yeah, the 3 didn't show up that many times, but we got a few 2s. So with a small sample, it's hard to detect that there's something wrong with this random number function, okay? Yeah, you're going to have some oddities where one number is going to be less than others, but let's increase the sample a bit, okay? This is the important part. Let's do this 100 times, and now you're going to start seeing a pattern where the numbers at the low and high end are roughly half what's in the middle here. So here, 0 came up 20 times, the middle numbers came up closer to 30, and then 3 is 15. I'm going to test again, and as I'm testing, you'll see... The, num the low number and the high number don't come up all that often. So this could be a huge discrepancy if you're building uh, maybe a gambling game, a card game, a dice game, and uh, you expect your numbers to be totally random. Well, they're not. The numbers 1 and 2 here have a much greater chance of success. You'll see that they both showed up the same amount of times, and that amount of times is much higher than the guys at the top and the bottom. Now, if we get an even larger sample, you know, it's just going to keep becoming more and more clear. So let's run this code 1,000 times, all right? 1,000 times, I'm asking for a number between 0 and 3. And the 0 only shows up 166 times, whereas the 1 and the 2 show up in the 300 range. The number 3 shows up less than 200 times as well. So again, if I'm betting on a number here, I'm going to choose 1 or 2, not 0 or 3. And we can loop something 10,000 times if we like. And again, with such a large sample, it's going to be clear that the numbers representing the low value and the high value show up much less frequently than 
the numbers in the middle. All right, so the lesson here is that it's very important when we're copying and pasting codes from various forums and sites online uh, that we not only always trust people, but that we test it. And I can't thank Matthew enough for pointing me in the right direction. So that's the bad function. Let's show you the good one. Let's just uh, uncomment this line. So in random number, you'll see now I'm using a new equation that's using math.floor and we're also adding one to our max minus min values. I always tell people you don't necessarily have to understand what, how a function works, you just need to know what it does. But on top of that, you should test it to make sure it is doing what it should do. So don't worry about all this gibberish if math isn't your thing. I just wanna show you that this function here works much better. So changing around the equation, now when I test, you'll see that there is an even distribution of occurrences of these numbers showing up all across the board. So I'm going to test again and you'll see that each number shows up roughly 2,500 times. Well, if I'm running this code 10,000 times, you can't get a more even distribution than that. 10,000 divided by the four numbers that we have to choose from gives us our 2,500. All right, so there it is. That is the function you want to use. Now there are plenty of people who are using this right one and explaining it the right way. Um, one site that I came across, of, which is my go-to site for great information, karupa.com. This guy, Scott, um, shows you this function in action and he also explains it step-by-step, step, the math and the thinking behind everything. So if you have the time and the interest to actually understand what max minus min plus one times max whatever means, um, it's all spelled out for you here. Hopefully my video illustrates the fact that one equation works much better than the other. Um, if you do a Google search for the equation I was using, you'll see that it does show up in many, many different sites online. So we want to make sure we're using the right one. And uh, my friend Matt, who showed this to me, he is a JavaScript front-end developer. Uh, he makes cool things like this beard slider. Um, pretty much most of the stuff I do in Flash, he's doing fairly well in uh, JavaScript these days. So if you want to check out what he's doing, uh, please go to his experiments page and you can see some really uh, cool and fun stuff. So he's pretty much pushing the bounds, boundaries of what we can do with all this new HTML5 five stuff. All right, so check out some stuff. Ballarama, make 200 balls and uh, test the performance. And it's cool, fun stuff. So check it out and Hopefully you guys now will be using the right random number functions and understand why. All right, catch you later.